Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking all about Pascal's triangle. So basically Pascal's triangle goes like this. In row zero, we just have number one. Then in row one, we just have one, one. And then from here on out, we have ones on the sides. And we fill in all the other numbers with the sum of the two numbers above it. So one plus one, is 2. So a 2 goes here. Let's see. 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So 3 goes here. 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1 is also 3. Then we have 3 plus 1, which is 4. 3 plus 3, which is 6. 3 plus 1, which is 4 again. 4 plus 1 is 5. Uh, 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 plus 4, also 10. And 4 plus 1 is also 5. Then we have 1 plus 5 is 6, 5 plus 10 is 15, 10 plus 10 is 20, 10 plus 5 is 15, 5 plus 1 is 6. And then in our last row, well actually there's tons of rows, more than this, but in the last row that I'm going to bother to actually do, 1 plus 6 is 7, 6 plus 15 is 21, 15 plus 20 is 35, 20 plus 15 is 35, uh, 15 plus 6 is 21, 6 plus 1 is 7. So this is Pascal's triangle, and we can go further and further and further. Now, why do we care about this triangle? Basically, the sum of the n row is 2 to the power of n, right? So let's think about that for a second. For row 0, and keep in mind we're starting at row 0, not row 1. So this is row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3, row four, uh, row five, row six, and row seven, okay? Good, good. So two to the power of zero, oh, not 20, sorry, two to the power of zero is equal to one. And one plus nothing else is just one, so good. What about 2 to the power of 1? Well, that's equal to 2. And 1 plus 1 is also 2, so the total is also equal to 2 here. What about 2 to the power of 2? Well, that's 4. And two plus, uh, 1 plus 2 plus 1 is also equal to 4, which is good. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. And 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 is also 8. Uh, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. And 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 plus 1 is also 16. 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. So that's 1 plus 5 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1, which is also 32. 2 to the power of 6 is 64. And let's see, does this also add up to 64? It should, and it does. Excellent. And then 2 to the power of 7 is equal to 128. And these terms also add up to 128. So basically, this Pascal's triangle tells us if we add everything up, the, the power. Now, there's other uses for Pascal's triangle as well, which we'll get into a little bit as well. It also says right here, each term in Pascal's triangle is equal to the sum of the two adjacent terms in the row immediately above. Therefore, T, you know, tn comma r is equal to tn minus 1 r minus 1 plus tn minus 1 r, right? So what they're saying here is, let's say we're looking at this term here. This is the same thing as the addition of this term here and this term here. That's all that is saying, which is something that we already, we already kind of discussed uh, when we actually filled out the triangle. But yeah, I just wanted to make that, uh, that clear. And there are other uh, uses of Pascal's triangle as well, not just this use. Uh, however, uh, for right now, this is the main way we're going to think about Pascal's triangle. We'll talk about binomial theorem in Pascal's triangle, which is another use for it as well. However, for this lesson, the main thing you've got to know is that the sum of row n is 2 to the power of n, and also how to fill out the triangle. So basically just saying things like, well, um, you know, if we take the two terms above, we get, and we add them, we get the next term. Good. All right, so let's do some examples. The first example asks, uh, which row in Pascal's triangle, or sorry, that's the next example. Let's start with example one. What is the sum of the eighth row 
of Pascal's triangle. Well, we know that the sum of the eighth row would be two to the power of eight, and we already calculated that two to the power of seven is 128, so we have to just multiply that by two one more time, and we're gonna get 256. So two to the power of eight is 256, and therefore the sum of the eighth row is 256. Good. All right, example two. Determine which row in Pascal's triangle that has a sum of 4096. Well, we know that 2 to the power of n is equal to 4096. And so you might already know that, oh, well, therefore n must be 12. However, let's say that wasn't obvious. There's a couple things you can do if it was not obvious that n is equal to 12. If it was not obvious, uh, you could do trial and error. So just be like, okay, is it 2 to the power of 10? Nope, we still have to go up. Okay, 2 to the power of 11, go up, you know, and so on, kind of trial and error. Or you could solve directly using logarithms. We could say log 2 to the power of n is equal to log 4096, which means that n is equal to log 4096 over log 2, which means n is equal to 12. So that's the other way we could solve it if we wanted to do like a direct solve with logarithms. So for anyone who has already taken uh, grade 12 advanced functions, which is actually not a prerequisite for this course, and so you don't have to do it this way in terms of this course, um, but anyone who has taken that course would also know this, that this is a way of, of doing it. And some people may have learned this as well in the grade 11 class as well. Uh, but either way, this is a way to directly solve using logarithms. If you're unfamiliar with logarithms, that is okay. You do not need them for this course specifically as grade 12 advanced functions isn't a prerequisite. Only the grade 11 regular functions class is a prerequisite for this. And uh, not everyone's as familiar with logarithms from that one. But yeah. There we go. Okay, let's move on to example three. It says each expression as a single term for Pascal's triangle. Well, the thing is, we know that if we're adding up two terms, then that will be the same as the term on the next row, right? That's what we know. And so if they're saying here the fourth term of the 10th row, plus the fifth term on the 10th row. Well, that's going to be the same as the fifth term on row 11, right? We go down from row 10 to row 11, and then we say, oh, well, it would be number five, right? Because that's what's going to be directly below these two. Same with this one. We could say, okay, row 39, number 10, and row 39, number 11. Well, that's going to be row 40, the same as row 40, number 11, right? So just like what we were saying back here, that how this is illustrating to us that the number on the row is equal to the two above it, right? The two that are above it. Very good. Okay. Here's kind of um, a different type of example that involves Pascal's triangle as well. It says a checkerboard is an eight by eight game board with pieces able to only travel diagonally on the dark square. So basically our piece can never travel on one of the white squares, only on the dark squares. If the checker or game piece uh, is placed as shown above, so looks like this is our game piece right here, right there. Um, how many paths are there for the checker to reach the opposite side of the game board if the checker can only move forward and is unable to jump over spot X? So basically, this spot X here, we can't cross. We can't jump over that spot. Okay, so let's think about that. Let's think about that for a minute and how this could relate to the Pascal's triangle. Well, we want to write down how many moves it would take for a checker to get to each spot. So if the checker was to go here or here, actually let's change our color to white. I want it to show up nicely here, there we go. 
one move, one move, right? We could move the checker one way or one way, this way. Okay, very good. Now, how about here? You know, if we're going to here, there's only one way to get there, right? We'd have to move this way, this way, and same with this one, right? How about here? There's two ways. It could go one, two, or one, two, right? It could go like this. Let me grab my highlighter. It could go one, two, one, two, right? So that's two different ways. Whereas to get to this square out here, it would just be, there'd just be one way. Or same with here, just one way to do this one. So this tells us the number of ways that are possible. Okay, how about here? We have one again. Here we would have three, right? Because we're adding up the one and the two. Here we're adding up the one and the two again. Here we're just putting one. And then here we have one. And then here we have one plus three ways is four. Three plus three is six. This X we actually have to jump over, so I'm going to ignore. Okay, next we're going to have uh, just four is on the top here, so this will be four. This will be four plus six, which is 10. This next one will just be six because we have an X here. This one will just be one because we have the X here and the only thing that's above it is a one. Okay, here, same thing, only thing above it is a one. For this one, we have four plus 10, which is 14. Here we have 10 plus six, which is 16. Here we have six plus one, which is seven. Then we'll add up our last row. So 14, uh, 30, uh, 23 and eight, right? And so what was the original question again? It asks how many paths are there for the checker to reach the opposite side of the board if the checker can only move forward and is unable to jump over spot X? Well, let's see, there's 14 ways. There's 14 ways for it to get to this first spot here, 14. There's 30 ways for it to get to this spot. There's 23 ways for it to get to this spot, and there's eight ways for it to get to this spot, right? But here's the thing, here's the, what we have to keep in mind, is that all of these means, any of these scenarios of any of those four means that we did reach the end of the board, right? We got where we needed to go at the end of the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add up those things. So let's do that, 14 plus 30 plus 23 plus eight. And what does that equal to? Let's see. Okay, calculator, oh. 14 plus 30 plus 23 plus eight is 75. So therefore, there are 75 ways to reach the opposite side of the board. Good. All right, we have one more example kind of similar to this regarding grids using Pascal's triangle as well. It says on the grid, how many different paths are there from the top left corner A to the bottom right corner B if you can only move right or down? Okay, so we can only move right and down, so we can't move left, which is good, because if we could move left, then, you know, we could argue that there's infinitely many paths in, in a way, right? Uh, and we can't move back up, we can only move down. So let's write out how many ways there are to get to each of the, um, the, I like, I want to say vertices, each of the um, the points here. Well, there's one way to get to here or to here, also one way to get to here or here or here or here, right? That's our basis. Then there's two ways to get here, right? We could go down, then right, or we could go right and then down, so that's two ways, right? Here we have one and two, which gives us three ways. Same with over here, three ways again. Over here, we have three plus three, which is six ways. Over here, three and one gives us four ways and four ways there as well. Then we have six plus four, which is 10, 10. And then here we have 20 ways. Over here, we would have four ways as well. So that means here we'd have 14 ways. So pretty much we're just adding, right? We're just doing Pascal's triangle. We're just adding these up, right? Then here we have, um, 
just 10 again. All right, so then here we just have 10 again. And then let's see, over here we would have 30. Oh, not eraser, I would like 30. And then here we would have 34. And then here just 14. Okay, what about the next row? Uh, let's see, we would have 10 here. And actually 10 here as well, by the way. 10 plus 30 is 40. 30 plus 34 is 64. And then 34 plus 14 is 48. Then we have 10 plus 40 is 50. 40 plus 64 is 104. 64 plus 48 is 112, like that. 10 plus 60 is 60, right? 50 plus 104 is 154. Okay, so 104 plus 112 would be 216. And then 154 plus 60, let's see, 154 plus 60 gives us 214. Then 154 plus 216 equals 370. And so our final number is 500. 584. So therefore, therefore, there are only there are only 584 ways to reach point B from point A. And there we have it. All right. Well, good work, everybody, today. Well done. Next day, we'll talk about Venn diagrams. And eventually, we will revisit this and talk about binomial theorem, but that will be in the future. So we'll see you for that. Bye, everyone.